Banana Yoshimoto is a revered author of Japanese literature. Her novels are loved and celebrated all around the world, but it's been a while since we've had a new book from her translated into English, and we finally have The Premonition, translated amazingly well by Asa Yoneda. This book was written back in 1988, the same year that Kitchen, her most famous novel, was also written and published. And we haven't had an English translation of it until now, and I'm very happy to say that this is another knockout hit from Banana Yoshimoto. I love her works, I've talked about them before, I've made a dedicated video about the genius of Banana Yoshimoto, which you can go check out. Her works are amazing. If you've ever read anything by her at all, you've probably read Kitchen, but my personal favourite is Goodbye Tsugumi. I really love that book, check it out if you haven't read it. And The Premonition is another fantastic piece of Japanese literary fiction. I mentioned the translation, and I think I want to start there because Asa Yoneda is an amazing translator. Having translated Idol Burning by Rin Usami with an incredible sense of personality, and vibrancy that I absolutely loved. And that vibrancy is absolutely felt here with The Premonition. This is an author-translator dream situation. As for what it's about, The Premonition is a very short book. It's about 110 pages, so it's a novella, it's very, very literary, and it's told from the perspective of a teenage girl called Yayoi. Yayoi, as far as she knows, has spent a really, really happy, kind of blissfully comfortable life with her parents and her brother living in Tokyo. The book is set in the modern day, and Yayoi has this habit of sneaking out sometimes to go take a long walk or take a trip somewhere, and her parents have kind of gotten to the point where they're used to it, and one of the places she likes to go is to visit her aunt. At the time in which the bulk of the story is set, Yayoi is in her late teens, and she has this aunt who's very aloof, very free-spirited, who lives alone and works as a music teacher. This aunt is called Yukino, and she's in her early 20s, I believe, so the age gap between them isn't very big. Yayoi has snuck out of the house a few times and taken a trip to go visit her aunt and spend some time with her, and that's where we are now with Yayoi in her late teens visiting her aunt, and we see this aunt from Yayoi's perspective. She kind of looks up to this aunt as someone who's very free-spirited and does whatever she pleases, and seems to live a very kind of hedonistic life, at least a very independent life, and Yayoi admires that. But she also loves her parents, she loves her brother, and she's pretty happy with her life. But during this particular trip, it becomes apparent that Yayoi has enormous gaps, very awkwardly obvious gaps in her memory. A lot of her childhood is not clear in her mind, and as she spends time with her aunt, those gaps kind of get filled in, and there are revelations. There is one big revelation that takes place about halfway through the story. And as I've said, this is a short book, it's only about 100 pages long, so it's kind of difficult to talk about without verging into spoiler territory. And I am not going to spoil what these revelations are, but I will have to talk about the impact of them, at least thematically, and what the book is trying to get at and succeeds at getting at. Yukino is a very independent person, as I've said, and Yayoi enjoys a little bit of independence as well. She enjoys sneaking out of the house and going places and exploring and visiting her aunt. The two of them have a bond. There is a real kinship there between them, and it's really lovely to see right from the get-go. But it's while spending time with her aunt that these gaps start to get filled in, and Yayoi's understanding of her childhood and of her family relationships starts to shift and meld. On the page where this revelation takes place, it's almost a kind of trippy experience to read. You start the page understanding something. There is a status quo in place, and as you read through the page, you get to the bottom, and everything has shifted. Perspective and focus and understanding and context has all been changed around. And it feels, as you're reading this page, I read it like three times, it feels like it's bleeding. Like everything is being stirred up in a liquid bowl, and by the end it all looks different, it's all a different colour. The way that the author-translator pair have managed to communicate that, that bleeding and mixing and changing of things, it's absolutely brilliant, and it, it is kind of trippy, and I love that. It really, really reminded me of A Pale View of Hills, the first novel by Kazuo Ishiguro, my favourite author. Ishiguro is famous for his unreliable narrators, and there is a moment at the end of A Pale View of Hills where a single sentence is uttered by the narrator 
that changes, I think, the narrator's perspective. It goes from third person to first person or something, and it shifts everything you thought you knew about the protagonist. And it's absolutely brilliant, and it's a wonderful trip. When I first read it, I went, hang on, what? I had to read it again and again and again, make sure it wasn't a typo, because it easily could have been, but it's not and it shifts your whole perspective. This book does something very, very similar to that. But this is not a book about unreliable narrators. It's more a book about the unreliable nature of our own memories and perspectives, and what we come to understand or what we choose to understand about the world. The idea that we all have our own version of the world around us, in our minds, in our memories. None of us see the world exactly the same as each other. We all have memories and perspectives and opinions and cultural understandings, languages, blah blah blah. You get that. But it's fascinating to see how Yayoi's memories have behaved a certain way and eventually they won't. That will stop and shift and change. And it doesn't even really feel like the truth comes out so much as just her memories are kind of evolving. It, it's a fascinating way of depicting the concept of the twist or of the unreliable narrator, which again, Yayoi really isn't. It's Yoshimoto doing something different with that theme, with that trope, and I think it's absolutely amazing. That said, this book thematically is also very much about love. All of Yoshimoto's books are. She loves love. She talks a lot about family, romance, and death and therefore mourning, because we often mourn our loved ones when they pass away, etc, etc. Her books are always about love and death, love and death, love and death, over and over again. This one, death, thematically, you could tie in somehow by talking about the death of our memories, or the death of our childhoods, that kind of thing, a more metaphorical death. But really, this is about love. Her books are often about familial love, romantic love, or the kinds of love that are almost indescribable. And I would say that the premonition covers all of that. Every kind of love. Familial love is the most obvious. She has love for her parents, for her brother, and obviously for her aunt. And those things, as the revelations come out, don't disappear, but they change and they shift, and the book explores the relationships between different forms of love. And it's almost hypnotic, it really is, and it always is with her writing. I will say that this book is kind of strenuous in places, and I do think that the kinds of relationships that are explored here could be triggering or upsetting for people, just depending on what your disposition is towards these themes. Sometimes the kind of love that is explored in this book reminds me more of old English Gothic novels like Wuthering Heights or Frankenstein even. The kind of love that sits on a knife edge between acceptable and unacceptable. And I don't want to spoil anything, I'm just going to say that. You can then judge whether you want to read the book or not, but I would say that it kind of veers into taboo territory at times, depending on, again, your disposition. It's really up to you. But I love taboo stuff, and I wouldn't actually call this taboo. It's way more complicated than that. It's a book that shows the complexity and diversity of love, and all the different kinds of love that there are in the world. Because you've got familial love, you've got platonic love, you've got romantic love, but love exists in so many different capacities. Especially in the internet age, where we realise we can love people we've never met, we can connect with people in spite of our differences or our geographical distances, blah blah blah. You can feel like you fall in love with fictional characters, or feel like you're friends with them. We have parasocial relationships. I know I have parasocial relationships with various YouTubers or podcasters or whatever, and I also know some people have parasocial relationships with me, and sometimes it's really weird, and I don't like it. And so when we take into account all these different kinds of relationships that actually exist, and we don't really talk about, at least as part of a larger whole, this book feels quite revelatory, and definitely ahead of its time when you remember it was written two years before the internet existed. Not that the internet is a breeding ground for new kinds of love, although <laughs> maybe it is. But you'll be amazed, once again, at how Yoshimoto handles the theme and the concept of love, and family, and relationships. It's absolutely brilliant. Now, as I've said twice, this book is only a hundred-ish pages long, so I read it in an afternoon. But that means it's tough to review, it's tough because 
So much of what makes this book special is the twist itself and the way that Yayoi's idea of herself gets reframed. Talking about a book where the most important thing is the twist, but not talking about the twist, is a challenge, and you let me know if I've done a decent job of that. But I remain a huge fan of Banani Yoshimoto, she's a fantastic writer. Asa Yoneda is an amazing translator. These two together have created something absolutely beautiful, an amazing Japanese novel translated perfectly into English, and I think it's excellent. Yoshimoto is an amazing writer. If you've never read her before, read this and you'll see why. But also please read Goodbye Tsugumi. That is my favorite of hers by a long way. I still love that book so, so much. Kitchen is great, Asleep, Hard Boiled and Hard Luck, Moshi Moshi, all great. But Goodbye Tsugumi is a special one. And The Premonition, obviously. I feel like I've sold you on this now. So go check out all of her stuff. Banani Yoshimoto is an amazing Japanese author. Support me on Patreon if you'd like to. I would love your support. And as always, subscribe for books.